Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and in this video we're going to talk about what bioinformatics is and how to learn it. In the next video, I'm going to show you some of the latest bioinformatics programs that lets you build your own software and share them with the world. In this video, we're going to build a bioinformatics reading list, and we're actually going to do that using some software called IO. IO lets you do computer programming in any language on any device. You can also build websites that anyone can visit. So what is bioinformatics? Well, bioinformatics is where biology, computer science, and statistics mix. And what comes out of this mixture is computer software. To quote Russ Altman, who's a bioengineering professor at Stanford, bioinformatics is the creation of tools to solve problems. The goal is to build useful tools that work on biological data. So if you're watching this video, most likely you're either a computer science stats guy or you're a biologist. So the question is, why should a computer scientist learn biology and why should a biologist learn computer science? Well, the short answer is knowing computer science makes you a better biologist and knowing biology makes you a better computer scientist. Understanding other fields gives you a new way to look at problems and it makes learning new material easier. One fun example is that you can actually use evolutionary genetics to get a better idea of how open source code works. So in biology, you have DNA, which you can kind of think of as the source code of life. Now, just like how you can think of DNA always changing with mutations, you have source code, which is always changing with updates. In biology, it's well known that if a piece of DNA starts mutating fast and then starts splintering off into different species, that's a sign that the animal is doing well. Well, source code works the same way. Open source code that is doing really well is usually changing really fast. And a project is doing really well when it starts splintering off into different pieces of software. In computer science, this is called forking. So if you're a biologist, you might be thinking, right, well try explaining how the lower mutation frequency between guanine and cytosine because of the extra hydrogen bond relates to computer code. And you're right, code is not DNA. But the phylogenetic algorithms used to analyze DNA can be useful to better understand software. Like life on our planet, open source code is constantly evolving, which is one of the reasons why it's so competitive. Now, computer scientists might be thinking, this is just one random example, not a reason to learn biology. In general, I feel that computer scientists think that they're separate from the rest of science. But really, there's a much deeper connection between computer science and science. And I'd argue that if you want to be a really good computer scientist, then you will be forced to learn physics and biology. For instance, let's consider one of the hottest fields in computer science right now, machine learning. Let's say you want to become a data scientist. Now when you start studying data science, you'll learn about this thing called information theory, which is kind of like the birth of machine learning. It was invented by this guy called Claude Shannon, who was trying to figure out how to make hard drives work. Now a funny thing happens when you start to look at information theory. Let's take a look at this equation for something called relative entropy. Now when we open up a super beginner's chemistry book, that's even a cartoon chemistry book, we see an equation that looks a lot like the equation for relative entropy. Also, you see how this section is called Gibbs inequality? Well, when you turn the page of the chemistry book, you see Gibbs right here. Now the chapter of this chemistry book that we're looking at is thermodynamics, which covers this thing called entropy. And when we go back to information theory, we see that this equation is actually called relative entropy. And the most important equation in information theory is entropy. So what's actually going on here? So when Claude Shannon was trying to figure out what to name the most important algorithm in his theory, he asked one of his coworkers, von Neumann, what he thought. When von Neumann took a look, he said, oh wow, this algorithm already exists in statistical physics and thermodynamics. There it's called entropy, so you should just call it that. So the roots of both artificial intelligence and statistical physics 
are based on the same algorithm. So who was this guy, von Neumann, who knew both computer science and physics? So when von Neumann was in college, he studied chemistry and math, but he was also really good at things like physics and computer science. Von Neumann is actually the guy who invented quantum theory as we know it today. Von Neumann wrote all of this down in one book called The Mathematical Foundations of Quantum Mechanics. And for the math guys out there, the book has just been updated with modern LaTeX, so now you can really read it. But if you want to get into this stuff, this is not the best book to start with. Instead, I recommend a book called Consistent Quantum Theory by Robert Griffith. One annoying thing about consistent quantum theory is that you can't get a digital copy of the book on Amazon, but you can probably find a PDF of the book somewhere online. But before you read this, you should read another book called University Physics, which introduces all the basic physics topics. And before that, you should read a book called The Cartoon Guide to Physics. So right now you might be thinking, I just want to learn computer programming and biology. Why are we talking about all of these physics books? Well, first off, you should know that von Neumann was one of the first guys to think of there being computer software or programs that run on top of computer hardware. This is part of something called the von Neumann architecture. But it's really important to remember that the connection between biology, computer science, and physics is much deeper than that. So a hundred years ago, when physicists were trying to solve all of these really hard problems in what was then chemistry, the math they needed didn't even exist. So what these physicists did is they invented the statistical tools they needed to answer these questions. And these are the same tools we use today on the cutting edge of biology and computer science. For example, remember at the beginning how I said evolutionary genetics is related to open source coding? Let's say you wanted to work on this problem. Well, once you start reading a book about evolution, like the statistical methods in molecular evolution, you'll find that they use the exact same algorithms that you learn about in physics and machine learning. As for machine learning, a lot of the ideas that we call the cutting edge are actually just things that physicists thought of a hundred years ago running on modern computers. For instance, in a book called Machine Learning, once you start getting into it, you'll find that they have a ton of physics examples. For instance, in this chapter about something called variational inference, we see that their example is something called the easing model. And if you Google easing model, you'll find that it explains how the center of atoms rotate, which gives us a better understanding of magnetism. By the way, if you want to learn about all of the ideas in machine learning from just one book, Kevin Murphy's Machine Learning is the book I recommend. Now machine learning is not just old ideas. There's a lot of really exciting new stuff. For instance, neural networks has been dominating the field. If you want to get into that stuff, you should read a book called Deep Learning by Bengio. You can find the entire book online. Also, it's open source, so when you take it, you're not stealing. So, so far we've covered a lot of really great books. But what book should you read when you're just starting out and you want to learn biology, machine learning, and programming? Well, for data science, there's a beginner's book called Doing Bayesian Data Analysis, which is hands down the book that I recommend. So I recommend that you start by learning Bayesian statistics, because that's the easiest one to understand. Now the Bayesian Puppies book also teaches you basic programming in this language called R which is great because I already have R installed on IO. So you should be able to instantly start following this book's computer code in IO. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments and I'll update IO's software. I really like this book and I want other people to start reading it. So how about biology? Well, one of the really fun introductions is again, one of the cartoon comic books. This one is called The Cartoon Guide to Genetics. The next book in biology is one of my all-time favorite books, which is called The Molecular Biology of the Cell. Have you ever asked the question, what is life? Well, this book gives you a very detailed answer to that question. Now, since life is just one big chemical reaction, it's really important to understand chemistry. 
You might be able to get away with just reading the cartoon guide to chemistry, but if you want to get the most out of the cell, then I recommend first reading another book called Chemistry, A Molecular Approach. See if you can read up to chapter 10 in the chemistry book. Now in the cell, after you finish reading the chapters on genetics and the chapter on signaling pathways, you can then start to read the really mind-blowing stuff that's changing biology. Part of what makes biology so fun is that the things that are being created right now is leading us towards technology that's more revolutionary than the transistor or the computer. But don't worry, it'll take us a long time to get there. One thing you probably heard about is CRISPR-Cas9. A review paper called CRISPR-Cas9 in Genome Editing and Beyond gives a great short summary if you want to learn more about this. But there's a lot of other really exciting things going on in biology. For instance, high throughput methods like microfluidics. I might cover this in a later video. Alright, so now the last subject that we need to cover is how to do programming. So what makes programming different than other fields is that when you're starting out, you should not read any books. The best way to learn how to code is by actually writing code. So you need an interactive coding experience. For this reason, I'll be recommending some websites and some YouTube channels that teach you how to code. When you're just starting out, the website Codecademy has some really great tutorials on Python and JavaScript. When you do these tutorials, you'll actually be forced to do coding exercises. On YouTube, I also really recommend Socratica's Python tutorials. When you follow these tutorials, make sure that you actually type the code as you watch the video. To start coding on your computer, I recommend that you download IO, which is the software that I'm using right now. It allows you to do programming in any language on any device. I actually do most of my programming on an iPad. If you want to get into website programming, then the website W3Schools has some really great tutorials on HTML. Also, if you're interested in bioinformatics and you want to learn how to combine all these different things into one program, then you should check out my other YouTube videos. When you start getting into more advanced stuff, like supercomputing or cloud computing, you should then check out Google Cloud's Quick Start Tutorials. The reason why I use Google Cloud is actually because they have the best tutorials. But really, the best way to learn programming is to build your own project. I think the easiest place to build your own app is inside of IO. In a later video, I'll show you how you can do this using Jupyter Widgets. Also, if you're programming and you get totally stuck on a problem, that's okay. It's just part of programming. In those situations, try googling your problem and see if you can find a site called Stack Overflow that has the solution on it. Alright, we now have a complete list for learning bioinformatics. So one cool thing about IO is that it's super easy to turn this reading list into a website that you can go and visit anytime you want to check out the books. So to do that, scroll down to your load save box and then save the graph that we just made. Then we're going to open up one of IO's apps called IO Online. When IO Online is up and running, we can go to manage files to publish the bioinformatics tutorial that we've been working on. To publish a file, all you have to do is write some comment like finished reading list and then you click the publish button. Now, if we go to the IO Newsroom and then click Refresh, we'll see that our bioinformatics tutorial is the most recent thing that was published. Then, when we click Web, we're brought to a website that shows our reading list that we just made. You can actually zoom in on any book and then click it to get more information about what it is. There's even links that show where you can find the book. Now what makes this so cool is that this is really easy for you to do and all you need is the application that we were using right here. This application is called Cytoscape and it was created so that you could actually share bioinformatics data. So just pretend that these books are proteins and that these arrows represent interactions. Then when you click publish you can share a graph of your research with the rest of the world. I'll have other videos where I really go into detail about how to use IO Online and the Cytoscape apps. Okay, so in this video, we covered a lot of information across a lot of different fields like physics, computer science, and biology. 
But I think the most important thing to remember is that all of these fields are connected and part of one thing. Like the guys who invented this stuff are the same guys who created this stuff. And now these are the people who are redefining this stuff. So in this half of the video, we covered what to read. In the second half, I'm going to really dive into IO, Cytoscape, and something called Gene Pattern and show how you can combine these tools together to do science. So what you guys think of the video? What would you like to see in IO? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, definitely click like and subscribe. This is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.